Let's get this show on the road. Let me just close out this. I was just looking at some uh, investments, but um, well, the market's not doing great at the moment. It's uh, surely, I mean, there's a lot. They can't all go down at once. I mean, why would that happen? Why are they all going down at the exact same time? Uh, I mean, the laws of averages say that some of the coins must be like, have their value from somewhere that isn't I mean, that one's got a, it's got a, I don't know. Um, maybe if I refresh, it'll help. What's that? Bitcoin's at 18.26151. Oh, okay. It's gone down to, gone down a bit more. Ah, it's gone up a bit. It's a uh, top gainer. Let's try clicking that. Uh, it's only, Stable coins. Well, this is fine. All right, let's st get back to our bot stuff. Um, let's check that our run works. Let's run a test. Okay, I didn't run the bot test thing. Yeah, that would be test.py. The economy is amazing. Mm. Test.exe doesn't exist. Right. Wmake test.exe. Oh, it's test. Hmm. Is it test IO? Is it bot test? What is test.exe? Why does it want that? Looks like I've renamed it. Is it <coughs> bot test? And that runs bot. Um, why is it running test.exe? Oh, uh, it would be test IO. Let's try that. I think. Try and close this stuff. DOSBox is having some problems today. But didn't I have like a test server thing? Oh, and then I run bot test. Which fails. Okay, we'll worry about that later. Today we're going to be writing our parser. More parser stuff, which is fine. Um, we're just gonna blast through this. All right. So what was, what we're going to do is look at the to do. 
Um, that stuff that isn't important at the moment. Um, let's open up Tmux. So go to Drive C code bot. And I think it's no, it would be test test pars. And so we have all this, and now we have to do test pars tags. Right, that's what we we're up to. Um, so let's check out our pass file. Yeah, if you need to get those, then it's fine, I guess. So we have pass tags. Um, how are we going to test this? Should I even bother testing pass tags? Probably not, right? Um, it might just be better to test pass message and then read the buffers and stuff. Maybe. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to pass message and we're going to test that a message is just tags right now. So we want to test that it passes with tags. Is my audio a bit high? I keep seeing it go into red in OBS and that's triggering me. So pass message. Um, we're going to have an input and then we're going to have an, so we're going to have an input string and then we're going to have output struct. Um, we're just going to make a quick test thing for it. And so what it will do, let's do a split. Um, so what it will do is it will give us the um, tags buffer, tags buffer length, since that's what we're going to be writing to down here. And so we want to test, test one. Um, hmm. We should also, should we note how much we've read? Is that important? Probably not, right? Um, although I guess we should probably check that we're not like going over the limit or something. Although the code should protect against that. Yeah, we'll, we'll assume that it doesn't buffer overflow because, um, yeah, because our primitives are not going to buffer overflow and we're not doing anything outside calling primitives. So we have tags buffer length. So we want to test one. We're going to have um, no tag equals All right, let's start commenting this a bit. So no tag equals tags buffer length of zero. Tag equal tags buffer length of three. Tags buffer equals tag. So we can kind of make that a bit more generic. We can um, put some like garbage data or something in there. Um, and then we will have to have, I mean, should we just make a random generator for this? That could be fun. Um, that way we can test everything at once. A kind of fuzz tester, if you will. Um, and that will save us time. Yeah, so our test, our big tester 
um, it will decide what tag we're going to have. Um, decide on tag and add. And that will decide what tags buffer will be. So we're going to kind of decide on what each part of the message will be and then check the output. Um, yep. Um, but we also need like, how do we end this? So do pass calls password if and password does skip space and skip space is optional. Well, we, we won't bother testing like when we don't have all the components. Uh, but for now, let's pretend that's all the part of our st string. All right. So how are we going to write this buffer, this uh, generator? Well, I think we're going to have to have a, um, we're going to have to have generate tags, which will give us um, Hmm. Let's start with generate character, generate random character. Then we have generate, uh, actually we'll just have generate random characters. There we go. And then we will have from that generate tag. So this would give us a string of size um, only ASCII, um, only alphanumeric. Yeah, generate random alpha. Then generate random tag. Generate tag it would be generate alpha. Um, max tag buffer. Up to, so we're going to have to have generate length hmm um yep okay we're going to actually not be completely random we're going to try and give values that are going to hurt it so this will generate a length of zero, um, one, two, ten, one hundred, basically. Um, generate alpha numeric will be like A, B, C, D, F, A, B, C, D, F, zero, one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, like that. Uh, because who cares? We don't need to worry about like, uh, I guess we should get Z as well. X, Y, Z. Um, those are like the, those are the important letters, aren't, aren't they? A, B, C. Uh, we can just do A, B, C, X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. Zero, one, two, seven, eight, nine. There. We have zero, one, two, many and lots. Generate tag, we'll have to cap it to the tag buffer length. If tag is um, not empty, if tag um, is not empty or whatever, then we will compare, then we will add it to string with, with that, with an at. Then tag um, and put it in the expected. Well, no, the expected tags buffer and buffer length will always be the same, right? It'll be the length plus the buffer. So, yeah. 
So we will have to have a struct test data or something. Um, and that makes the test data. And then we will have the actual tester um, check outputs. Okay. We can get rid of this for now. So does that seem reasonable, everyone? Um, I guess the first thing we'll do is make a pass message tester. So how do we do that? Um, well, we have our call pass function here. Now call pass function, does that apply for our for our pass message? We need something that's going to set up the um the parser. So we won't actually have pass message or global pass tags. Um, we'll just have tags buffer. What is pass tags length? Um, that's not a real thing. We'll have to, do we even want to have copy word and skip space? Do we even want to test those? I mean, might as well, right? Um, high level stuff. We have password if, which we haven't tested. Um, yay, a strawberry. Um, we have password if, and we have pass tags. And that sets the tags buffer. We have password if, and we have skip space. We've already written the tests for the high level stuff. Um, all right, so we have IRC syntax. We probably should do password if, since it is in the primitives. So let's probably do that now. Um, we also have push pass buffer and that's a macro. And we can't do anything about that. Um, we can't really test that since it's not like a C thing. Um, so let's do test pass. What, what will we need for password? Password if. Word if. Um, and so we will test if it um, has, has prefix, no prefix. Oh, normal and no prefix. That seem reasonable. Mm -hmm. So let's grab this. Hmm. Okay. Um, optionally skips a word. And so we're going to give it um, at hello. Um, we're going to give it at, and then it should read H E L L O 
space 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 world so it should read up to here that should be password if i'm not sure what out should equal i guess we, we will have to do a mem comparison i'm doing the things How did I test test copy word? We use string companion. Okay. Uh, word equals hello. Um, um, so we, we read more than we write. So that's one, two, three. Data out dot read plus equals what's length read three right word length data in out is at and then we'll try that copy word um, string comparison out word so let's try this this is test uh, uh, pass word if normal and then we will just comment out that's a that can be like a to do function normal and that would be no prefix and that would be at hello world okay let's try that W make test pause dot XE. Assertion failed. We got 32. Yeah, okay, it makes sense. Um, the data in out should probably be a space. Data dot in out doesn't equal 64. Wait, what? Test pass 188. It's because I'm sharing the in out thing. Hmm. Oh dear, this is it's just maybe like the first function that takes an actual value in, but mutates it. Let's see. In out equals car h. Check pass func. What does that do? Retval. Oh, am I supposed to give a retval of space? Got zero. Oh, so that's maybe not it. Maybe I need to comment out assert int there. My test suite is not the best. What if we see in out? Oh, this should be data in dot in out. I am not the smartest chef. Data out dot in out should be a space, I think. Maybe? It's unclear what it should be. I think it should be a space because it's peaked. Length red doesn't equal six. 
Oh, uh, it should be one plus the word length. Because it's a prefix. Right. Of course. Hmm? Length three, data in length three doesn't equal five. Got eight. Data in dot length three doesn't equal five. Okay, that makes sense. So five is one, two, three, four, five. Plus six, seven, eight. Where is that coming from? Where's the five coming from? I can only assume it's coming from word length here. Maybe I'm misunderstanding my code. It reads five. Is it reading five? It should read. <clears throat> it should read. The prefix. Plus one, two, three, four, five. Um, then it has one, two, three to skip spaces. So five plus one. Is length read? Okay, what comes first? Is length read compared first? Yeah. So it compares the in, in, out with out, in, out, um, out length read. Why would it be five? Did I find a bug in my code? Hmm. Let's start tweaking stuff. Let's make it so it's, it should be zero, right? If I do this. No, it's still the same. 189. Done it in length red does equals five, got eight. Am I supposed to set data in? I only set data out here. Data out is set to data in. So it's copied, then I subtract from it. But what is it set to? In the beginning. What is length read set to? It's set to the string length. And read is the pointer. So what's the string length of hello world? Oh, huh? <clears throat> If I do that, um, what if I just do one, two, three?
Rhett doesn't equal zero got one. Um, I guess that means we've run out of space or something. Because I'd have to put a space afterwards. But no, it shouldn't. It should just peak. Why would it return one? Returning means what's in the um, overflow, right? Yeah, push F, pop. So yeah, we get the um, overflow thing. Why is it overflowing here? Am I out of my mind? One, two, three. Let's just junk this for a second. Ah. I was trying to I was testing the wrong function. I don't claim to be the best programmer, but sometimes I'm really quite bad at what I do. Okay, got it. All right, let's see. Yeah, hey, what's up? Data in out doesn't equals 32 got 64. Is 64 W? You can be like you and never make anything. I'm trying. I'm trying my hardest. You don't understand. Why is it 64? That's at. Why is, why is it outputting at? Is it not working? Is password if broken? Oh, is it passing in? Okay, yeah, it's passing in. In out, what's in out? In out is going to be AX, isn't it? All right, yeah, so I need to move that high. Um, this is weird as hell, but we're going to pack some bits together. Um, and then that would be a space, I think. In out doesn't equal 16416 got 16503. All right. What is that? Um, 16416 in hex would be 4020. So 16503 would be 4077, which would be a W, right? Okay, so we've tested that case. Um, let's test with no prefix. So we do hello world. Um, in out, we set it to at, and then it should be exactly the same. 
should have made no progress at all. Data dot in out doesn't equal zero, got 16. All right, so data out equals zero, I guess. That shouldn't be right. Data in, in, out equals, doesn't equal zero, got 16, four, five, six. So my best guess would be this would be eight plus H. Yeah, all right. Um, skips, uh, nothing. All right, so there we go. Some tests. We, we have some tests. So these are our standard tests. Um, let's also do a define pack. Um, double byte AB. And that will just be a eight plus B. That way we can do double byte. Um, at double byte at W. Does that make more sense? All right. Actually, let's just change double byte to be A H A L. There we go. Solved. All right, time for our big test. The first thing we're going to do um, is we're going to define a function called pass message. And what this would do, um, <clears throat> global, um, do pass. This is going to call, um, do pass, pass message. And so what will it do? We need to push all our registers, obviously. So we need to push um, AX, push BX, push CX, push SI, push DI. Um, I guess we could just clobber the flag, the carry flag. Uh, who cares? Flags, flags. Um, hang on. Input. Um, that we're going to have in will be, um, what's the other convention I've been using for strings? 
SI for SI and length SI. Okay. Um, so SI string to pass CX string length. Um, and what, how do we return? Returns AX. Returns, I guess. We could just set the carry flag based on failure. Um, how have I been returning failure on uh, other stuff? I guess we could just return um, the carry flag. That would save us some time. Okay, so we're going to go back to our pass thing. Return CF equals set on failure, I think. Uh, we won't push SI and CX because we're going to consume them anyway. But we will push DI. So AX, BX, CX, SI, DI. Push AX, push BX, push CX. Um, DX, then we would have to move, um, CX to BX. Because that's the buffer that we'd be using. Move CX to BX. Um, SI would be the read buffer. We need to, to do set up. Set up AX plus CX DX writing. All right, then we do the do pass. And we have AX, we can just move um, zero to AX, right? Who cares? Then we would push the pass buffer. Um, now we don't actually need to set the, the pass buffer, do we? Because we're not handling the writing. Yeah, this is fine. Move AX, we don't need to set AX either. Um, BX is used for re um, read length. You don't need to push SI, I think. Let's look at this again. Let's look at our calling convention again. So we need to push AX. Move AX, um, we don't need to do that. Push BX. Move CX, BX, um, push SI, no, push CX, no, DI, and that's all. We only need to push DI, used for write buffer. Although we could, wait, no, let's push pass buffer, um, restore it. Push BX. Wait. Well, 
Why is it pop AX? Pop pass buffer, thanks. Hey Masaki. So we push our pass buffer. Buff max length. Then we pop the length. So this isn't a push, this is more of a set. Push pass buffer. Set pass buffer. And then pop pass buffer length should be sub. Sub pass buffer length. Okay. So we do need to push BX. And then we do our pass. What does do pass do? That will call and then return. No, we're just going to call pass buffer. Then we will pop di bx and ax. And then I guess we will return. That seems like a safe bet. So we now need to um, write some C code that runs this monstrosity. Yep. So we need to make a function that calls it. And this is gonna be a bit tricky, um, but we can already do this here. We just need to do pragma do pass, um, int do pass, and then we do character in, Int length. Uh, we push the base pointer. Um, we don't need to do that here. Um, it modifies all the registers. AX, BX, CX, DX, SI, DI. BP, SP. Um, that's all that registers, isn't it? Yeah, it's all the registers. Um, How the fuck do you um, specify which registers to call stuff with? Um, I guess we'd have Prager aux pass do pass, do pass, and then we will have call do pass. And when we call do pass, all we will do is actually, isn't there a better way to do this since we're just setting registers? Let's read the documentation. Is it in P guide? Pragma aux. I get the feeling it's not in here. I think it would be in C guide. All right, here we go. 
Oh shit, no, we're returning in a flag, okay. So what registers do we modify? Um, we only modify SI and CX actually. So we move parameters, um, then we'll reuse CX. So parameters would be SI and CX and we modify, I guess we don't need to worry about modification. So then we just do call do pass and push F. Then we pop that into CX and then we end CX1. So that should do call do pass. Let's see if that compiles. Um, symbol do pass, all right. So we do need that symbol. All right, so test do pass. Test pass smoke. And this is just going to test that it, I don't know, it works at all. Pass test. Oh wait, we don't need, we need, we can just make this a function. Void test pass smoke, void. And this just calls do pass. Um, hello, and we'll just do in string length in, in ret. Um, and then we, um, where's our assert? Are we using, yeah, assert int. Assert int, tags buffer length, one, two, And then we want to compare it. Is it string? Yeah. String compare, we want to compare tags buffer later with our in plus one and length minus one. Okay, let's see if this works. And we want red to be zero. Must be a pointer or a constant. Wait, what? How did I, how do you do this even? How do I refer to data structures? I think it would be like, um, character tags buffer, um, int tags buffer length. I think that seems correct. Although last time I got tripped up Cannot declare both a function variable of the same name. Et. Expression must be pointer. Extern.
what? I don't want to declare a function. I want to declare a data type. Are we going to go down this road? Let's see. Expression must have pointer type. Undefined symbol tags buffer length. Ah, uh, how do you even do this? Pragma orcs. Okay, we're in this section. If only I had like an index. Here. Oh, that would be so good if I could just. Alias, do we want an alias? Alternate names. Pragma orcs, my return will replace by my return. But I should be able to do that. Pragma orcs tags buffer, tags buffer. Tag my orcs, tags buffer lengths, tags buffer lengths. Void pragma tags buffer. Hmm. Alias names. So sim alias. Pragma orcs funk type push args. Called push args, which is used for param. Alias names, especially. Okay. Pragma aux symbol alias. So symbol alias. We do a comma and do it like that. Maybe that'll help. No, so we have a symbol.
But that redefines it, I think. Source conversion type. So I want to be able to set the type information for this symbol. <coughs> So it says function type and push args. Extern function type RTN1. Wait, can I just do put the underscore there and then map it like that? Like maybe I can alias it the other way and then I can do extern character tags buffer and then extern um, int tags buffer length. Expecting end of line. Maybe it's because I have to put like the underscore afterwards. Expecting end of line. Why are you expecting end of line? What did I do to hurt you, computer? What if we just do this? What if we rename it and do that? And then that way we can kind of mess with it a bit. Task power buff lane doesn't equals five. All right, so this is a int as well. Holy shit, it works. What the hell? I think. Let's just try doing a smoke test, but with like an extra thing. Oh, that succeeds too. It, oh no, that should succeed. Hang on. What if we just do a hello? Okay. Tags buffer length doesn't equals four, got negative one. 
Tags buffer length got negative one. Tags buffer length got negative one. Oh, because it didn't pass at all. That works. All right, so we have our quick smoke test for checking call do pass works. All right, this is probably going to be removed in a bit because it's going to be replaced by like actual tests, but we have that. Um, what is it? Um, you may not say anything gross about toes. <clears throat> All right, so now we want to create a struct of test data. Struct. Tonsil stones are not okay. Um, fuzz test data. So what we will do is we will have fuzz test data and we will have um, character tags and that will be null if zero. Um, I think that's about it actually. Wait, tags buffer length. Do we also have like the maximum? Tags buffer max. Buffer length max. Um, I guess 512. We won't worry too much. Oh, we should test if we have stuff that is too big for the buffer, right? Um, that's something we should test. Okay, so we have our test data. Test data used for fuzzing. So we want to void um, generate test data void. And this will return a struct fuzz test data. Uh, we'll just fill it. Um, data tags equals hello world. Let's do that for now. We'll just start by hard coding it. And then we will have test pass random. Then we have our um, to do run I know a hundred times. So we generate our struct um, fuzz test data. Uh, we do generate test data. Um, and then we will have message here. So data message equal at hello 
world. So we'll just have to set that uh, character in equals data message, string length in, int ret, um, if data tags, then we want to compare that. Otherwise, um, assert in tags buffer length is negative one. All right. We also want to be able to print um, the data if it fails. Okay, I shouldn't be doing that. I should be doing data.message and data.tags. Why are Australians too, so tall? Don't know. Um, we'll have to set a seed, actually. Um, so when we do a cert int, we will have to, I guess, check if a seed is set. Not too sure. So int, let's say, if um, current seed doesn't equal zero, Right, generation seed I current seed int current seed equals zero. And then we'll do current seed equals I know five and then we'll set it down here back to zero. I get that's using global variables, but uh, yeah, I don't care. Um. Although we could just put the seed here. And then we can do um, seed assert um, rand assert, and then we add the data. That seems fine. That seems better. I don't want to use a global variable. That's one step too far for me. Um, add extra. And extra can be nothing there. But if we do brand assert val, we can do that and we can do print f seed is Should we don't even need to specify the data. Oh, we should probably should. Seed is I. 
data seed. That seems okay. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh, do I use assert in somewhere else? Yeah, okay. Just put that there. Um, actually, let's just do... Um, print data, data. And so then we can do void print data void printf. data print data is do Australians have big booty parts I don't know I think that should work. Member C has not been set yet. It's fine. Data report, and then I got to write tags and then message. So we have our first failure, and we're going to print what's up. So test data report. So we have our tags buffer length doesn't equals 12, it equals 5. Why is that? That's because our tags has a space in it. There we go. And let's set it with um, a null and see if printing that works. Let's just make this fail. Okay, that's fine. Um, we also want to find our string compare thing. And make that our own assert, I think, maybe. <sighs> assert string compare out word and what's the length
word length, I guess. And then we'll do the same thing here. Rand assert string compare data tags buffer data dot tags length. And this is really going to be helpful, that's all. Let's grab this and then we'll have set string compare. We'll do um, Half of this is just building a test framework, isn't it? This is horrible. Um, so let's do assert in and replace this with assert string compare. Um, a, B length. A, B, length, A, B, length, horrible. Yeah, it's not great. String comparison failed, SI doesn't equal um, S. And then we do expected, we do A, B, and then we do that. So let's see if this works. Hello. Hi. And then that'll be two. Assert int. What did I do to the assert int? Val expected. Is this still string compare? Sometimes you just have to make your own test framework. All right, that should not have succeeded. Or should it? Okay. String comparison failed, test report. All right. We're getting places. Um, now we need uh, a seed. So what we're going to do is take a seed here, generate test data, data seed. Um, and then we'll look at how C has random stuff. Random stuff. Um, we have rand, we need to do srand, I think. Please log in to continue. Go away. So srand and rand. What does srand do? 
it sets the seed. Okay. Can I spend two hours on theming? I wish. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, I guess we're going to generate the seed ourselves. Int seed equals generate seed. Int generate seed. Yeah, I knew you were going to say something like that. So int seed is generate seed. And so now we're going to do what next? We're going to seed the random number generator with seed. Kind of a weird thing to do, but okay. Um, and we're also going to get the seed from the time. How do we get the time? That's simple. I think. Um, see seed from time. I know this isn't, I know. C is so cool, is it? Don't get confused. C is not cool. Time has not been declared. Integer value may be truncated. Why? about this. Um, this is actually fine because I only need the bottom few bits of the time. Um, so let's just do a quick print seed is I. And then the string comparison fails. That's good. And it tells us. Oh, shit. That uses the seconds. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Can't I use the current number of images on Jailbrew's Yowie tag? <laughs> what, what happens if I do this? There are I less than 100 plus plus I. So we want to test this 100 times. And it all tests using the same seed because the time is the same. No. All right. Um, we need a better random source. Can DOS even get the, the milliseconds? Okay. What if we set it to zero? Actually, um, got to use a random number driver. I mean, DOS, I know we'll just like try generating a random number. Um, All right, can we get some kind of feedback from this? So we start with the time. What if we add the current random value?
Is that random enough? So we're feeding back the current random value and we're mixing in the time, I think. I'm not opening sockets to get randomness. <laughs> what the hell? Um, hmm. Does this look random enough? Socket to random.org. Um, what if we just seed with the time at the start? But the thing is, this has to be reproducible, so I can't use random here, can I? Maybe I can? Hmm. Do you think this is fine? You just feed the previous rand value? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? We set it to, we seed it at the start with that, and then we just generate the seed randomly. And then system D does the same. Don't you ever talk about me or my system D again. That looks like enough entropy, maybe. I don't know. Okay, seed equals rand. And if we do in seed there, we do test random seed. That should be enough entropy, right? Uh, so that way, if I have like issues, I can just do a uh, ask message is an undefined reference. What? Oh, yeah. My bot's broken at the moment. All right, that seems to be good enough. So I don't know what kind of random, let's, I'm guessing it's some kind of linear feedback thing. It's rand. Do we have like anything else we could use? Is it C lib? Yeah, let's see what Whatcom says about this. Um, Srand. I'm interested now. What? I have the Whatcom source code, right? Let's just quickly, let's just quickly take a peek. Um, I think I have it somewhere. I uh, will just use GitHub. Open Whatcom source code. Let's just have a quick peek of um, the Sarand function. Let's see what tags we've got. Do we have version 1.9 or anything? 1.9, okay. We'll just assume it hasn't been changed. Um, it would be in... Probably not in build. What's in, what's this blood? Okay, let's try looking through the, um, 
Is it in blood? Blood. Celib. Um, do we have, is there a DOS? A. C. Uh, assembly. I got it. So is there a RAND here? No. Misc and math. We'll check in there. We'll check in miss misc and math math. In C R for Rand. Come on, pull Rand. Rand dot H. Do we have a Rand dot H? What about if I do void s rand int seed? Maybe it was unsigned. Math c c. Okay, so this might be it. So we have our seed rand, which runs, which sets rand pointer, or. Uh, um, wait, does it do nothing? Does SRAND do nothing? Oh no, only on RDOS does it do nothing. What's RDOS? What's RDOS? Tell me what RDOS is, Google. What's RDOS? The RDOS environment. Okay, RDOS. Okay. So we have um, Rand pointer. Let's just double check here that this code, this thing does actually work. So let's just use the same seed for all the tests. All right, that's good. So what does it do? It sets the seed. And then. Um, oh. RDOS just has like a syscall or something for this. That's weird. Um, we have init rand next. Rand pointer equals init rand next. So I guess it initializes it. Um, all right, so it looks like it's a linear shifter or something. Um, it multiplies it by that number and then adds a number one, two, three, four, five. Then it shifts it down. Let's search this in Google. Why is it used in Rand? So this is basically stock Rand. Yeah, it's a linear. Um, feedback thing. Linear congruent. Oh, it's not a feedback thing or am I thinking of the wrong thing? Yeah, this is not what I was thinking of. I was thinking of a linear feedback register. Okay, this is fine. So now we have to actually generate some data. What's on our to do? Where, where did I put my to do list? Um, yep, got our struct test data. So, 
need to generate length. Let's make this random length. Uh, tags can be, how are we going to free all this memory? Very, what, what is happening in my chat? Don't, what? I don't know why I'm even making that a pointer. Um, okay. So we set that up. So now we're going to generate a tag. Um, generate tag. So void generate tag will return a character string. So we'll pick a length, um, random length. Int uh, max, I guess. And so what we're gonna do here is modulo a random number. Is Masaki going to scream in chat at me for writing that? Um, we're going to take a random number. Um, <laughs> yeah, the angry, the angry, angry stuff. Um, I don't remember how to get a random value. Um, random length. Oh, I just need to pick one, two, three, four, five, or whatever. So, um, we need, we only have how many values? It lengths equals zero, one, two, ten, hundred, five, one, three. You're making emojis in the fate in the chat. I know. Um, so we want to get, uh, so we do modular size of lengths and we return length, um, index. And this is fine, right? And then we do, um, character buff equals Um, equals random alpha numeric. So we um, random alpha um, alpha is num numeric um, malloc length um, if buff equals null return null. And then we do for in i equals zero, i under buff, plus plus buff. And then we'll do buff i equals random alpha num return buff. And then we're going to do character random alpha num void. And then we're just going to do the, the same thing. Alphas.
Does that make sense, Kodo? Yeah, it's fine, right? <laughs> no, it's fine. You said it's fine. Expression is not meaningful. It's not meaningful. I'm out of bounds. It's fine. I'm overstepping them. Are you sure I should be moduloing this? Expression is not meaningful. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Perfect. What do you mean testing everything? The expression is not meaningful, Kodo. Can you help me here? Why is this not meaningful? Oh. What do you mean testing everything? How do you test everything? Wouldn't that take time? We don't have infinite time. Don't lie to me. Cannot convert right expression. All right, this is C plus plus. Expression must be a pointer. I. That's right. I don't know what I was doing there. All right, let's see. So tags, yeah, okay, so obviously that doesn't work. So now we have to append all this to a buffer. How do you append stuff in C? What is it like, screen append? Append. String cat. That looks scary. I have to be epic instead. You so use AS printf. Do I have AS printf? Isn't that just C? So I got to use SN printf. I don't know about this. I think I'll just use mem copy. Um, mem copy is fine too. Yeah, I know the size up front. Right? 
the string land return zero one now. Okay, data tags null zero. Undefined behavior. Don't you mean stuff I have to read in the source code? Oh, this is a shit show. Um, I guess I could calloc. How do you calloc to add memory? Can I do that? Realloc. Yeah, let's use realloc. Or I could use SNPrintf. The thing is, is that I might not have certain aspects of it. So we do if um, character message equals no data message equals malloc one, I guess. Um, and so what we do is if data tags, we do data. Why aren't I drunk yet? This isn't like me. What? If data tags, data message equals realic. Um, wait, message size plus equals stringling data tags, real luck data message. Shit. I don't know where I'm up to in the message though. Shit. Shit, 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 shit. How do I do this coder? Wait a second. What, what happens when we want to generate bad test data? Mm. I feel like I, I, I feel like I've failed here. I think, I think if I took five minutes to think about this, I would have easily understood the problem. Um, but I need to be able to specify specific test cases too. Um, So perhaps I don't need any kind of randomness. Maybe, I'm not sure. Kodo help. Um, yeah, let's remove the randomness. So we're going to do test pass. Actually, yeah, no, we're not going to remove the randomness, but we're going to have test pass cases. Normals. And so this is just going to be static data structures in static data structures out. So we have our tags, we have our message. Um, let's, let's grab that. We have our tags message. So we will have um, not generate test data. We'll have generate message from our data.
And then we'll just start with a case of one. So we have our test data. Um, let's say data.tags equals hello. Um, and we have our in, then we have all the stuff here. So data.tags equals hello. Um, so now we need to generate the message. Generate message data. So I'll have a set of cases that have the tags. And then I'll have like a default one and I'll just modify that. That sound good? So generate message, we will do, um, let's replace buzz test data with uh, pass test case. Um, we'll find data and we'll replace data with case. We'll replace rand with case. And we will replace data here in this section with case and same with the camel case stuff. Um, and generate message, we'll just set data message equals data tags for now. Syntax error. Syntax error. My eyes are a bit blurry. Can anyone see the syntax error? Yeah, what's up, Kaz? Coal 38. Oh, what? 236. 38. Case. Pass test case. Eye blurriness is a sign of COVID. It's also a sign of fatigue, I believe. I don't understand. Why can it... Why can I not name it case? Is case a reserved word? Um, let's just replace with test data. Um, so we'll place, place fuzz data with, with test data. There we go. Uh, we'll do ran with data. Okay. So this will be a bit better. I think, I guess case was a reserved word. Oh, because you have the case statement. That's right. Of course. Why didn't I think of that? Good night, Kodo. So we do test pass 
normal. Let's remove the time. Oh, big hugs. What the hell is a house, Kaz? Okay. A housewife, but Kaz? What? Okay, so now we have to copy the message. So if data tags, we want to add at, here's what we'll do. We'll just malloc something big up front. Buff equals malloc five, one, oh, two, four. That's fine. Memory is free in DOS, right? Um, and I'll tell the caller to free it. Uh, free data, data, yes, do that again. Oh, you can make that for me. Use real, use like Australian pumpkins though. I don't like your US pumpkins. All right, character buff if malloc, um, data assert, I guess I will assert int, um, data message. Uh, I don't know how to fix that. If data message doesn't equal zero, uh, if it equals null, then we're in what they call big shit. Um, we'll do at malloc test data, except one, here we go, solved. So buff, if data tags, then we'll do buff plus plus equals at, and then we'll do String copy, I think. What does it return? A pointer to the destination thing? Great, so that's not helpful. Um, string copy data tags. Up zero. Okay, hang on. Um, character pause equals buff. Pause plus plus. Character end equals pause plus one oh two four. So pause equals at. Um, we'll string copy. Um, pause data tags. I think string copy is dest. Yeah. Um, and then it will be. 
um, pause minus end, I guess. Int space equals pause minus end. Uh, God. Maybe we should just assume this never overflows. Hmm. Oh no, we can just check. Um, yeah, we'll just check here. Um, so we do string copy, pause minus end. Then we do space. And minus pause. Uh, what does string copy return? It doesn't tell me. There's no stuff. Ah. Um. Okay. How are we going to do this? Perhaps this is overcomplicating things, right? Maybe we should just manually write the message. Okay. Um, then we do struct test data data. And let's do struct test data normals equals tags equals null. Then we get no message. Then we have tags equals hello. Then we have at hello. Then we do this past normals. Or int i equals zero, i under. Size of normals divided by size of normals plus, plus i. Test pass normal, normals i. So let's see if this works out. Oh, it's, it's just copy it then. Size of is not allowed for an undefined type.
So size of normals divided by size of normals zero. Two, four, one. There's a syntax. Okay, so there's a syntax error here. I guess I can't do these sick initializer lists. That would be sad, I guess. Why does it say there's a syntax error? Oh, that works. But can I do like tags equals that? No, but can I do dot tags? So let's just comment this out and put a comment there. Let's just make a macro. Um, test data. That still wouldn't help. Um, tags. Message. That might work. And that seems to work. Um, okay. Um, so at how it works just to confirm that all right that fails all right so we have tag passing done um <clears throat> Big Daddy Jukes, no. Um, we also want to add a test for tag overflow. Test pass tag overflow. So we do struct test data, data um, data dot message equals um, at um, character message equals what's do we have calic? What's uh, Malik? I guess I'll do Malik a thousand. And we will do um, memset message uh, 
um, A, 1024, and then we'll do message zero equals at, and we want to um, assert um, data, data ret is is one from overflowing. Two six six. Small mummy jukes, what? So we're going to check that tag overflow fails, which it doesn't, which is surprising. Let's just set A. <clears throat> so hang on. <clears throat> Um, stock test data tests test we get an error if the tag buffer overflows um, and we're not getting that error though what the hell Print F. Um, I. Tag buffer length. Tags buffer length. See, I don't want to be dealing with actual memory issues one day. Tag buffer length is 512, but it didn't error. So, why not? <clears throat> so we call that. Is the carry flag not set? See, this is why you need to test stuff. All right, everyone? Otherwise, you'll get hit when someone sends like a, a thousand bytes to your buffer. You'll test me. So we call password if. 
Then we set the buffer. Sub pass buffer. Oh, that's that's overriding the flags. All right, so what we should do here is um fuck. Pop AX, push F. Pop F. Um, maybe that's wrong. Like, I don't want subtract to have an overflow. Carry flag should be set on failure. Is it not being set? I guess we will have to jump into the debugger. Oh boy. Um, yeah, let's hop over to run to cursor. Um, let's trace into. So we do, let's view our registers. Uh, so we call pass message. Let's trace into it. Um, that was the wrong thing. I fucked up. Run to cursor, trace into. Run to cursor, trace into. Run to cursor, trace into. Call one, jump carry dot return. And then we return. But wait, do we have the carry flag set? No, carry flag is not set. Let's step. Um, step over. I guess it's F F ten. So we call password. That sets the carry flag. Then we subtract, and that unsets it. That's what I thought. Why can't we push the flags? Like push F, op F. Reserve carry flag. I can see why people, I can see why risk V does not have a flags register. Still not set. Did I forget to remake it?
Hey, DPA, what's up? You okay? So we push the flags, we subtract, we pop the flags, we pop AX. The compare sets it, maybe? Shit. So compare sets the carry flag too. Oh shit. Okay, we're gonna have to. Oh, what happened? Sub buffer length, jump not zero turn. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to move this into the pass tags. Interesting. Actually, I think I'm wrong with this code. This should be... Why am I calling password if I should be doing do pass? I think this is a me problem here. Ah. Okay, now this is hanging forever. Why? Uh, what have I changed? What does do pass do? Calls it, then it jumps return. Oh, but then that doesn't set back the buffer. Oh, it's not meant to. Sub pass buffer. Oh shit. She confessed to Reen. Did he misunderstand it and be like, yeah, I love you. I love you too, Elise. You're my favorite sister. And then Reen said, no, I want, uh, at least said, no, I want, I want some of that. He thought it was a joke. <laughs> what a funny, what the fuck just happened here? Oh shit. I can't just return because I have something on the stack. <laughs> this problem problem big so I do have to 
move that into sub return buffer length and return will have to <clears throat> she basically walked away it's like okay I've done it it's done why am I pushing BX is that because I'm saving it no le length left in the read buffer why am I pushing that oh because I'm saving how much I've Red? What? No, it should be length left in the right buffer. I think. We should be pushing. All right, I need to refactor this code. It's, this isn't good. Let's go back here. So we set the pass buffer. And what does it do? It pushes BX and it sets DI and CX and saves and it sets the length to the length left. Okay. So let's not push BX. I don't know why I'm pushing BX there. Um, After we subtract the pass buffer length, we'll take the max and then the length. Wait. Hmm. So we start with 512. Start with 512 left. After we've written 128, it'd be 512 minus 128. So wouldn't that be 512 minus 384? Yeah. So could I not, wait, no. Yeah, could I not just subtract the amount left in the re in the right buffer? Which I think is what it does. Why is it comparing AX and BX? Why is it comparing the read write stuff? Is that to see if it's written anything at all? Oh, to see if it's read anything at all. And if it didn't read anything, then it puts negative one. Hmm. I think I may have screwed up here trying to refactor this. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is a mistake, maybe.
Although I'm not sure, should it be negative one ever? That just tells us that there wasn't a tags buffer at all. Okay. So if an argument is, well, how about we just set it to zero then? I mean, doesn't that make more sense? I guess it would allow like invalid input. Like um, it would allow, strictly speaking, it would allow, um, No, it wouldn't. It would just allow, um, no, we wouldn't. Okay, hang on. We would error if we try to pass tags and there's nothing, right? Yeah. Hmm. So we have password if. I think that's fine. We won't worry about that for now, but I think I'm going to rewrite this logic so that um, it's acceptable to have a zero read. All right, got one, that's good. When did we get it? With tag zero and message zero. We got one. I shouldn't, we shouldn't have gotten one though. That shouldn't have errored, should it? That's valid, kind of. It just sets the buffer to zero. And then we have this negative one we don't need. Jump not zero return. So we do test pass now, is that fine? Two four nine. So why would this be failing? Let's try and think about this for a second. We set the pass buffer. We do a password if. And then uh, we subtract the length. Hmm. Well, yeah, that must succeed. Password if it succeeds, then it will be fine. So we compare peak. If it's fine, then we return. Otherwise we try and read it. So why is it returning that? 
Let's comment this one out for now. And that reports one, two. Have I flipped it? No, something's wrong. All right. Um, w make test parts.exe. And let's open it up in the debugger. Um, the other window, please. Okay, whatever. What? Oh, it should be here. Let me jump into here. Then we jump into here. Then we jump into here. Then we jump into here. So pass tags is failing. It should not be. Let's see. So we set the pass buffer and stuff. That's good. We move R to eight, we call it, and password if is returning one. Hi. I need to make sure I keep stepping into things instead of over them. Eight, eight, eight. Um, why did that not jump into password here? Um, let's go to modules. Let's try and break it password if. So this is password if. All right, this assembly is a bit difficult to read now. Uh, let's try and only drop down to assembly when we know it's gonna break. Okay, so let's do code assembly. Um, then we're going to run trace into, which is F8. We call password if, we call peak, we compare it. And we return. We return. We do JB. Oh, let's jump branch. So 
So the peak is failing? But if I add it so the peak succeeds, shouldn't that be fine? Okay, let's just try and think a bit more. We set the pass buffer. That should be fine. We move at, then we do do pass password if. And that returns, which means password if must return. Do peak is causing password if to return. So should do peak is do peak setting the overflow flag? What's do peak? Do pass peak. So peak is comparing and jumping and clearing that sets or unsets the carry flag. Wait, that's carry flag, that's not overflow flag. Am I using the overflow flag? No, I'm only using the carry flag. We have the carry flag and that's the zero flag, isn't it? Hang on a second. We have the carry flag and we have the zero flag and overflow flag. What is the actual names? Carry flag. We have the zero flag. Okay. So peak sets the carry flag. Um, on failure. So if peak is failing, that's because there's nothing left in the buffer, right? That's not a comparison or anything. Compare BX zero. So if the length left in the read buffer is zero. So am I messing with BX? We push BX, we move CX to BX. We do password if, which does peak. And peak should succeed. Unless BX is zero. Why would BX be zero? That would only happen if the string length of in, which is data dot message, is zero. Let's do printf i length to see what this says. Six, so that should be fine. Let's step through it and just try and understand this a bit more.
data registers code source. So seven, oh, I went too far. Seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight. All right, we're in do pass. Let's look at our registers. CX is six, BX is zero, um, SI, is the correct value. So we go down there. BX is six. Let's step into. And we call that. We set DI to one, we set CX to two. And we move that to CX. We move AH to that. We call do pass. Um, let's break this into assembly. So we call, um, we move a H at, then we call that. So let's call password. If let's jump into peak. So peak compares it, jumps if it's equal, moves, clears the carry bit and returns. Then we have JB, we have compare. Um, let's if they're not equal, then we return. We call read. Clear the carry flag. Call near pointer copy word. We peek again. When is the carry flag being set? Wait. Is this because we don't have any trailing white space? We do copy word. Um, password if the carry flag is set after running copy word. Oh, that's because copy word needs a space at the end. I am I am silly. Now, why does that return one? Wait, was I wrong? Is it not because it needs a space at the end? So we're in pass tags. Uh, we're going to drop into password if. So let's look at assembly. Space. 
Let's trace into that. We're in password if. Um, macros make this a little bit difficult. So we peek. That's fine. We read that um, byte we picked. Now we call copy word. That's fine. We call skip space. That's not fine. Why is that? Is that because it expects a, a non space? It does. All right. We have command. So let's write that. Okay. Tags buffer length, that should be zero now if it's not set. Tag buffer length is 512. And if we set that to 100, that shouldn't overflow. Um, right. Setting the size to be something small should cause this to succeed. Okay, something's weird there, but let's go back and check this. Um, we also want to test we get an error if tags buffer is empty. And again, that's more um, this kind of pass thing. So tags overflow is not failing. Why don't I sleep? It's not sleep time. Something is seriously wrong here. This should be failing. Um, hang on.
to the wrong file. Couldn't Alec Maybe it's not able to allocate that. So tags buffer length is being set to 512, which should be expected, I think. But now it's not letting me actually do an actual test. Like if I do hello world there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Um, that should succeed. Correct. Oh, right. So this should always fail. Um, so let's say we start this as a 520 byte buffer. We set it to A. Um, then we set Five one twelve to space, and then that should be enough to get it working. I think. Let's try setting this to five one three. Why are you arguing with people on the internet? That hurts me. But you did. And then we test, we get an empty if there's an empty, test, we get an error if there's an empty tags. All right, so that actually succeeds for some reason. Is that because copy word? May copy an empty word. Copies are possibly empty word until a space skips any spaces. All right, that's fine. That's just one less thing to test. S tags can take up to 512 amount. So 
So what we'll do here is we will actually do 5113. All right, we'll just put those two tests together. Ret already defined. What? Oh, I see. All right, I should reorder these. You're a reformed Kaz? I think I might have already read that. Put you in the soup machine. Make you Kaz soup. What? So we have some interesting tests here. Of course, we have our um, test pass normals, but we also have our test pass tags overflow. We will probably want to generalize that. Anyway, let's add Pass tags. What do we add next? Um, let's see. Let's go back to our actual to do list. We might have the syntax around here somewhere. No. Um, so we have our tags. We want to pass our prefix. So let's add tags prefix uh prefix pass prefix pass prefix um and then we just replace that here and the prefix comes with a um thing So now we're going to have to test pause. So let's see, we have our tags. We're going to add a prefix now. Let's remove this. So we have no tags. We have just a command and we have a tags and a command. We're going to have a, um, no tags, but we will have a prefix. And that will be prefix command. And then we will have both. That seem reasonable.
Let's see if this works. Kaz soup. Tags, prefix. Prefix buffer is undefined. How dare you? I'm not a fan of code talking back to me. All right, let's see. We get an error when we just have a command. Test report tags, prefix command, empty message. What? Oh, it should be no. That should be null. It's really weird that you can accidentally set that. Okay, so prefix, prefix, message, message. So this doesn't work. Our prefix parser does not work. Does just with, does tags and prefix work? Yeah. So why does this not work? Why are we erroring here? Is my stream dropping out? It's okay. What, what do you mean it's okay? So adding the command, the prefix thing, has not worked is erroring for some reason. And I don't understand why. I guess we have to take a trip to the debugger. Just to make double sure. Um, do pass pass tags. So that should be password if that should be optional. That should not change anything. And pass prefix should be similar. Okay, let's do the test pass. Actually, we probably have to only enable that example. So, Mm. 
my assumption about something has been terribly, terribly wrong. Uh, let's look at the assembly. So we're in password if. We have our registers. Um, let's go back to our assembly and just space past this. Wait, what? Password if immediately failed. Okay. What? Oh, I went over it. I'm just not good with a debugger. Code assembly. So I think we call password if this is the at. But that returns a failure. Password if fails. Okay, can we restart our program and rerun to this point or? No, I guess not. Ah, shit, no, we're back. So here we are in pass tags. Let's enter password. Um, we peek. We compare. And that sets the carry flag. Oh, for God's sake, dude, no. We need to clear the carry flag after all our compares. Really? Well, lesson learned. All right, back to our uh, tests. Yay, they all work. Now let's add the command parser. All right. Prefix command. And we'll do pass command. I don't know why I'm spelling it with CMD. But we're going to do password. Do pass, copy word, do pass, skip space. So this one is mandatory.
So let's find this. We need to make that C buffer, C buffer, C buffer, C buffer, prefix. Command. And then we have to maybe skip any space at the end. I'm not sure. I didn't print out the the command. So is the command not passing now? So we're failing to pass the command. Why is that? Pass command, pass command. We do copy word and then we skip space. What if we remove the copy word there? What, 310? Right, this one would fail. Yeah, it's a kind of a weird thing to put there. I regret that. So without the skip space, that's because it runs out, isn't it? So what we need to start doing is putting the CR whatever at the end of the thing. Um, I don't know if that's going to really work, but let's pretend it works at the moment. Um, and then we will, I mean, we've got commands now. We'll make the command buffer a little bit smaller, like maybe eight. And maybe shrink these a bit too. Okay. So what's next in our to do? We have parameters and CRLF. <clears throat> now parameters is tricky because it's kind of a recursive thing. So we'll probably deal with that next stream. Um, let's put the exports there. Um, we're making pretty good progress now. Um, I do want to check though. Um, I think my line splitter um, 
I think it's in my state. So how do, what does that split on? A? Is that like N? Yeah, N. So we actually want these to have the R in them and then we should probably also have it so we then consume an R at the end. So if we go to um, our pass, we could see where's expect. Do expect. Wait, these probably should set the carry flags. So we want to do expect. We want to do expect the R. Oh no, that's a, that's a do expect for a loop. That's fine. So what we want to do is um, do read. What does do read do? Does that put it in the A register? Yeah. Then we want to do a compare. Um, then if it's not equal, if it's equal, then we will clear the carry flag. We compare them and we compare AL with R. And we clear the carry flag. And if it's not equal, we return. And in the return, we uh, set carry flag. And we return. Only used for errors. Byte data exceeds bounds. Oh, that should be, let's just give it a, what is it? D. And we'll put R there. And that all works. And then we want to test pass no R. Test we get an error if we omit an R. So our message would be command. But wait, what if there's no space? Are the parameters optional? No. It says here that parameters will always have a space. So we should actually move the space um, out of that.
And that way we can find our command. Can put an R in front of this. That should return. That should fail. Um, that should succeed, but if we remove the R, it should fail. Wait, command is no longer passing correctly? It should be. Pass command should copy word until a space. Oh. Right. We'll have to put a trailing space for now. And to do um, copy word should stop at R2. Where is this failing at? Oh, that's right, because if we run copy word and that stops at a space. So let's just say for now. Um, we're just going to skip over. We'll do, do, um, do pass, skip space. Okay. So we're also probably going to, let's also fix the bot while we're at it. Um, you know, the thing I've been working on. Logic. All right. So we have pass message. We're going to call do pass. And we actually can do, we can actually do command buffer and do command buffer length and then log that. I think. So this should log all the uh, commands we get. Do pass. I forgot the R. All right, let's try running the testing now. Let's go back to our thing, test server, bot test. Um, that's not doing exactly what I want. Not ping. So if it's not a ping, handle ping, 
Um, no, but if we do do pass, it should be calling log incoming. And it should be showing me the command buffer. Unless it's failed to pass. Hmm. How many spaghettis do I have? Not sure. Not sure, my friend. So incoming three. Oh, this might be it over here, actually. Incoming three, and then it prints nothing. Um, and that might be appropriate. No. Why would it print nothing? Incoming three. Is it because it's nulls or something? Let's just call log incoming twice then. I don't know. Yeah, so it's not, it's not giving us our best, but if we compare, wait, I'm dereferencing the command buffer. What the hell? Of course it's not gonna work. Look, it kind of works. See, we're actually getting the um, incoming um, command. So 002, 003. Um, that says test server 003. And this says 003 here. So we're doing it. We've actually got command passing going. Wow. And look, it just requires this amount of code to do it. How simple I say, you know, passes are easy I say, and then we just ignore the past 20 streams. and all this junk that I've written to help me write it, it's fine. That's fine. Okay, um, but the butt is working again. And it actually seems to be passing the, uh, the, the test server tests. That's good. But we're getting there. So next stream, we will be dealing with parameters and they're tricky because each one is have to going to have to go to a different buffer. And then actually, uh, hmm, yeah. Yeah. So params will have, we'll have the skip space there and then we'll check if it's either a dot dot thing or otherwise we will do it again. And I guess we'll just do this recursively. We could do this tail recursively. That'd be pretty cool. That way we wouldn't blow up the stack. Um, but we're getting there. We've got the ability to recognize commands. Um, wait a second, hang on. Did I just um, omit something? Yeah, okay. So I just missed this. 
see how this says test server 376? Well, this says 376, but that implies it's actually passed the test server stuff. So this is going good. We made some real progress today, which I make every stream, but... <sighs> We're getting there. Um, yeah. We're getting there. Um, we're getting a lot further than I thought we get. See, this is what happens if you just push yourself. You wake up every day and you're like, at least I can program a DOS bot. Um, what would I do without tests if I didn't write my damn tests? Um, that's something I ask myself. And I'm scared, honestly, about... About that. Could I have written this without all these tests? I'm not sure. Did you see how many bugs I found? Big bugs. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's the stream for today. I'll try and get back and do another DOS stream. Let's, uh, let's quickly check in with our Bitcoin price to see how we're doing. Oh no. Weren't we at 18,600 something when we started? Let's check the log of the past hour. So I've been streaming for like four hours. Ah, uh, we might be up. Um, so like 11, 30, 10, 30, 9, 30, 8, 30. Uh, it's going up. Look. And look, you can set it to be log. You can set it to be log scale on the graph. Hang on, let me show you. Let's show you. This is, this is the month. You have linear and then you have log. And the, the log scale makes it seem like you've lost less. So if you feel like you, if you feel bad, just look. You can just make it a log scale. And, you know, suddenly it feels better. That only happens for like long term things, but I'm going to buy a Tesla. Oh, it's fine. Why is there news over there? How much is this? That's playing video in my browser without me asking. How much of that is sucking up my bandwidth? What the hell? Uh, it's just, you block, what are you doing here? You're supposed to block the ads. I trusted you block. Okay. That's it for today. Hopefully next stream, we will have the parser done and I don't know. I guess we can start doing our command dispatching and state machines. Um, we could have a like command to number or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, later skaters, alligators.